Good news, everybody! More base building options. And gardening matters. You can even grow a Gomu Gomu tree right in the center of your base. So here's the garden, guys. I'll show you what we did with the place. Pretty nice, pretty nice. So a quick and easy trade secret for farming, guys. You can stack these plots and you don't need a conveyor belt, so it actually lines up on the squares and looks the way you want it to. So, quick and easy for you. Stack one, you jump, right before you fall, you stack again. It takes a few tries, but uh, the highest I can get it is up to 17. After that, it stops giving me the option to keep stacking. So, give you a hefty sum. Let's look what it gives us real quick at 17. Eh, it doesn't quite plant them all. Might have to jump. I think we got most of them. Tie that in with our new skill. It makes everything go quicker. We'll just get that guy. Fertilize. Let it grow. There it is. So yeah, jump drop place and uh, 17 stack is high as hell is able to get. Let's chop her down. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Alright, we got most of them. Uh, looked like it gave us a lot. All but like the bottom two. Alright, so maybe you can stack up to 15 appropriately. The farm plots could can drop your frames, so be careful if you're making a massive garden. So you're gonna jump, drop, stack. You can stack up to 12, and that way you can seed all 12 stacks with a single throw. You can get all the way up to 17. You have to jump on top to seed it, and then it's it's kind of hard to get them all hitting it. So I recommend going with 12. And again, uh, I had all of these stacked up to six all the way along the room, and my frames were dropping. It was rough. So be careful how much you plant. The other cool thing is they added some skills, such as Fertilize. Alright, so Fertilize just grows all crops super fast. It does cap at, I think, 10. So now we can go over here, we can set up our corn. Oop. So we just use Fertilize to grow the corn super quickly, and then we can use the Automate skill to grow them super quickly. And just like that, popped out 22 seeds. That's, that's pretty nice. It can affect up to eight machines around you at once, so it doesn't just have to be the seed. And voila, just like that. We got apple seeds and corn. Cool. So yeah, that's the uh, lower garden, guys. I just use this for quick farm in case I need to bulk up some vegetables real quick. More or less, everything else around is useful, but... Mostly aesthetics, because look at that. Fucking beautiful. But yeah, if you love building dope bases as much as I do, then the new update is outstanding. With being able to plant your own trees, huge amount of garden opportunity that are actually useful for in-game combat. We got a bunch of new doorways, which is pretty cool. My sweet base, you don't have to use the fertilizer on the trees so they can stay small, which is pretty cool. Cherry blossom trees, we got it all folks. We even got palm trees out front. The new visitor table, um, we'll see if I can't find one, but they bring ambassadors from another civilization. Interesting, they added some new NPCs, but they also give you random gifts such as like biofuel or the chef will give you some food or random things like that. So I've seen uh, ambassador chef and ambassador tech or mechanic or something of that nature. I guess we got everything we need to start cooking. Let's dig in. Come out of the cooking pot. I'm going to go over some noteworthy meals starting off with early game, uh, finishing with some end game meals that'll be worthy for your combat experience and worth you planting and growing shit for so starting off early game magic gets you some chicken nuggets <laughs> these bad boys will add an extra 100 onto your health which early game that'll be pretty big and they recover 100 mana for you 
and plus a half stamina bar. So that's pretty nifty. The whole roast, animal flesh, pepper, you'll get pepper in dungeons. Super easy to come by. Cooking oil, you also get in dungeons. Uh, this will be great for an attack build early on. It's going to recover 200 health. It will add half a stamina bar and give you plus 50 to attack. So also pretty nice. Also adds uh, plus 50 to your hunger. Pilaf is probably one of the highest heals. So carrots, I think they're a seven star seed, pretty easy to come by. Again, just do one of the big tower farms like we showed. Uh, shrimp, I will show, um, just use the crab trap setup. Uh, I will show you the crab farm here in the back in just a moment. And rice, again, easy to come by. So for 450 on heals, gives you 175 mana. This is a pretty good early game option. So pilaf, definitely a good choice. Uh, cream stew. We're starting to get a little more detailed, but you can get some milk and potatoes from, uh, or sorry, you can get some milk from, again, the farm with some cows. Uh, potatoes, early level seed, onions, carrot, animal flesh, all pretty simple to come by. It's just starting to require a few more resources at hand. But for 350 to heal, 200 of mana, and half a stamina bar, that's not too shabby. That's a decent meal right there. But let's carry on. All right, guys, a great carry around option. Wheat, flour, tomato, and animal flesh. Pasta. <laughs> Here. So there's going to be three minutes of 75% uh, of a full stamina bar. It's going to basically fill you up with 90% of your hunger. going to refill 120 mana and 300 health. So that's a pretty good carry around item for just not running out of mana or heals for little expense. So this is really easy materials to come across. The tease down below, we're going to go to the blossoming or blooming island and you need to chop down these shrubs they are a little bit greener and more condensed than the other standard shrubs you're used to seeing but they will be tea leaf trees uh, yeah good luck finding those guys the teas are kind of uh, underwhelming but they look neat right at least there's more to do uh, and if you're early game these can be useful for getting around a cold place i suppose or maybe just some extra stamina for travel the smoothies these are actually pretty nifty but not too shabby. Uh, the orange shake, yeah, not bad, but these are all just gonna be lower variants of the end. But more or less what you're working towards, so yeah, these are nice, milk, honey, ice, easy enough to come by. What you're working towards, pineapple shake and the peach shake. So peach, 150 to attack, but you are super susceptible to the cold. Um, so yeah, you can be in a hot area for this, but if you're in a cold area, it's gonna hurt. And this will last for three minutes, so an extra 150 to attack, base stat that's gonna last three minutes that's op it is gonna reduce your health by 200 if you're in game that might not be the biggest ordeal especially if you're doing an attack build or tank build even um and yeah 75 health 30 mana eh, don't really care but that's neat and then 25 percent to your hunger cool uh the pineapple shake essentially the same thing but for magic users so 150 to magic attack lasts for three minutes amazing susceptible to the cold but you get heat resistance 75 30 and 25 yeah, not too shabby. Those are pretty nifty. Banana shake looks a little weird, but yeah, these are all just lesser variants of the two that I just talked about. Over here, we got our sushi. So they don't necessarily line it up pretty well. So this guy is probably top dog, I think, of all the foods we have to work with as just like a carry around option. So rice, egg, vinegar, crab, and seaweed. That's not hard. It is quite a few ingredients. Uh, vinegar, we need to throw, let's go make some vinegar. Actually have not done that yet. The vinegar, grab all your rice. Ooh, that's literally all my rice. Yeah. And I knew that was gonna be slow as molasses. <laughs> we got one, cool. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's not too hard to come by for 200 attack, 25 to defense, that's crazy. And 200 to magic attack. Gonna give you a quarter stamina bar, refill a little bit of health, a little bit of mana, a little bit. So that's not a bad option for plus 20 to defense, and magic attack was pretty good there. Same thing with this guy, 150 to attack, plus 20 to defense, and that just requires shrimp. So all the sushi, outstanding options. As soon as you can get to farming those resources, I would highly recommend. So the sea urchin roll, 100, 220 to attack, 25 to defense. Like obviously, if you're going your attack peer, or if you're a magic peer. So, uh, and that only lasts for 30 seconds. I'm not entirely sure what the cooldown is. Let's check. Oh God. Well, here's an ambassador, guys. 
You scared me. I give you bird feathers. Oh, thank you. Yes. Starved. I hunt here. Okay. You do your thing. Um, can I catch you? Oh shit, we caught an ambassador. <laughs> yeah, you hunt here all you want. You do your thing. Well, that's dope. Cool, you can catch the ambassadors apparently. I think she's mine now, so she should stay when this refreshes. So, yeah, three minute cooldown. Brutal. All right, guys, so yeah, the sushi is gonna last for 30 seconds and it's gonna have a three minute cooldown, so it's a little rough, but that's a great way to add some solid DPS for, uh, I don't know if you really need some help with an extra one shot here and there. So yeah, those are some great foods to work with, guys. Uh, you got the rice pilaf and the pasta, good early game options, as well as the roast ham or chicken and the chicken nuggets. Uh, once you get there, you can start making some peach and pineapple smoothies, which would be a great long duration buff. And then you can get some sushi if you need some really big buffs that last about 30 seconds. So some great options, some great things they did with the cooking overhaul and just how it's utilized in game. Game's great. I love it. I love the cooking. I love building dough bases. They're adding more and more constantly. And we got a pet system coming in June. So I'm super excited about that. To the crab station. All right, guys, this is my fishing hub. So, pretty dope, huh? We got some typhoons and some crab traps and some conveyor belts and some torches and shit. We lost a torch. Torch, oh, no, it's in front of the chest. Anyways, so as you see, guys, all the spots where there's crab traps are used to be glass floors. I set the crab trap down. They need to be two squares away, but I did two squares and a slight notch if you're on the grid uh, lock panel. Or whenever you're placing objects i was getting i was getting them two squares away and every once in a while it just wasn't working so i did two squares and a nudge anyways after you set them all down you put a dropper on top of the crab trap and then use one of your retrieving rods and get rid of all the glass floors all the crab traps with the droppers will drop down to the bottom of the ocean because the droppers are on them they will now shoot everything they hold to the top and then you just put a series of conveyor belts around with some typhoon chest absorbers and you can catch everything you you need in the ocean so let's see what we've got yeah as you can see they're all down there with the droppers on them Just makes simple circle and hey we're getting some good stuff we got some odd lobster looking shrimp we got some sea urchins, crab, some squid, all great resources for making some hefty meals, and the new updated food fucking cooking awesome system of excellence. So, I'm excited guys. If you happen to build any dope automations or setups, please share in the Gilded chat so you can show off all the cool base setups or get ideas for how to set up an automation of your own. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope that was useful. The updates are great. I'm looking forward to June whenever the pets are coming. Maybe we'll get a mount system so captured creatures can be flown or rode around the island. Maybe one day we'll even get to capture a boss. That'd be really nifty. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. I hope it was useful. Good luck. Enjoy the ride, and I'll catch you at some point. Peace out, y'all.